So those that we covered are the main 16 Vargas taught by Parasha. I'm going to mention two more real fast. Um, one is uh, the, the D108, 108, higher Varga. And the D108, just to show you that there are higher Vargas, and some people say that no one knows how to use them and they don't have any uses and this and that. <clears throat> and, um, <laughs> but all these charts have uses. It's just a matter of whether you know them or not. The D108, that's dividing each sign into 108. Um, you look at the sun and the moon in that chart, and that chart will, you can predict what the person dreamed of. If you can get that chart right, you can say, oh, last night you dreamed of this. Oh, you constantly have this kind of dream. In that chart, you can see whether the person sees their guru or not in the dream. If they have scary dreams, flying dreams, all this is seen in the D108. Because it's the, inter the 108 is the interaction between the moon and the sun. And it's where we've lost the body, and it's just our atma interacting with the manas. So we're in the dream state. And it's just the interaction between the mind the, and the soul. And what's bubbling up from the atma level in the dreams. The D150 is another important chart. And you can rectify these charts. You're, you're zooming. My D108 Lugna is Leo. Don't I look like a Leo 108? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like? <laughs> yeah, what does that look like? <laughs> only, only in your dreams. <laughs> only in your dreams. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> only in the Well, so if the 108 is only, um, it's not in the body, it's the, the Atma and the Mana, there's no physical representation of it. Right. <laughs> I know. He was okay. testing us. <laughs> <laughs> It's rectified based on what kind of things you dream about. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, that's <laughs> in general, like, does the guru come to you in your dream? Or if, you got, like, if he does, the guru, the Jupiter has to have some association with the twelfth house. Mm -hmm. If you don't dream of the guru, then you know, in this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. If that is also the twelfth house, if you look at the twelfth house in one way. Huh? Oh. Well, we're not going to go into the deal. I'm just giving you so you know that it exists and what it's about. And one of these days, you know. Mm -hmm. um, 150 oh. is called the Nadi Yamsha. And this is where Nadi Jyotish comes from. And most people, when they think of Nadi Jyotish, they think of these magical libraries where you go and they just have the chart waiting for you. And it has your. Um, Nadi Leaves. Yeah, the, the naughty leaves. Has the past, present, and future on it, and you know, has your name already written, and they exist. And that's one form of naughty astrology. But you can also do naughty astrology when you rectify the naughty amsha. When you get that good with Vargas that you can rectify down to 30 seconds. you got to get your birth time down to the correct 30 seconds. And just one method that we use to get it down to the right second is you've got to get all the other charts. You have to have your D60 perfect, you have to have your D108, and then you can start working on the D150. And when you're working on the D150, the Lugna, there's 150 deities. When you understand the meaning of the deity, the name of that deity should have some relation to your birth name. Like if your name is Luna, right. your, your, your birth name is, was Wendy. What's Wendy mean? If we, in what, what language does Wendy come from? It comes from Gwen. It's like from... You know, Gwen. And what's Gwen mean? Gwen. It's like devotional. Devotion. So if it's devotional, that means that you're Nadiyamsha Lagna. The word should have something devo about devotional. The energy of the name should be seen in the Nadiyamsha what that name means. And that's the rectification of the Nadi Amsha. When we rectify the Nadi Amsha, there's texts like Deva Karalam and Sukhanadi and all these texts. And you look at it and they list for, and, and they give readings of your chart based on your Nadi. To the point, and, and the accuracy that it gives is things like if Rahu's in the 10th house, 
and your um, Brahmanadi Amsha, then you'll get a job at 33 taking care of old people and one of them will leave you their estate when you're 42 and then your uncle will pass away at 54 and he'll leave like, you know, it's like, that's how the Nani, you know, wow. yeah. That, that's the level you're working on. So is yeah. your, has your chart been modified to the Nani Amsha? Sure so is. So we could look to get stuff to try to learn more. Sure. Um, I'd work your way up, though. Master the lower ones first. Those are higher ones. Master the Shodash Shodashavarga first. Does every moon have a name? Do you think? Because like modern, a lot of modern moons are kind of made up. If they're totally made up, then we do um, subda. We look at the tantric meaning of the name. Like, let's see, what was your dog's name? Lola. Lola was her dog's name, and Lo. We, it doesn't really mean anything, you know? Lola, yeah. she made it up. So yeah, we. dog named Lula. Lula, too, yeah? It means love in Russian. Lola? Uh -huh. Lula. Lula. But if you, if you named it with the intention of it meaning love in Russian, then you look, the name should have something to do with love. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if it's made just to sound good, then it's made to sound good. And mm -hmm. we utilize the sound. La is ruled by the moon. It's moon, moon. So what's Moon Moon Dasha like? Depends on where the moon is. Oh, but just in general, Moon Moon. Should be good. Should be good, should be nourishing, should be caring, should be, you know, all these things. And then the name should have some association with that sound. Mm -hmm. What the sound means. Because every sound alone means something. Acha. Acha means okay. Acha. It's not a chu. A cha. It's a c h c h a. A cha. A cha. Whenever letters are doubled, you say twice, like vargotama. Vargotama. Are you bringing it to him? If there's two letters.